New York City is nothing like any other city in the United States. You have a small environment with lots of people, massive numbers of new immigrants. Well, it's kind of wild. It's not for the faint of heart, and you need to hustle. This little island of Manhattan has some of the most complex construction in the world. As a writer, it's a great place to be. There's inspiration everywhere. There's something magical about New York. It's like any other city in a way, only more so. The era of the great migration from Europe began about 1820. During the following 70 years, immigrants came from Western and Northern Europe in growing numbers from Ireland and Great Britain, from Germany and nearby countries. It was about five days across the sea. The Irish movement to America in this period was kind of a tradition by that time. Once they got here to Ellis Island, they would be ordered to form two lines, one line for women and children, one for men. They were immediately now in the hands of shouting uh, watchmen and guards and matrons, and they would enter into this building and they would undergo a very brief medical examination. The doctors wore military uniforms. Now, very small numbers were actually rejected, but those who were, it was very painful for them. The Irish came at a period when New York was just developing as a city. They came here with pick and shovel and they, they built, they, they participated massively in building and expanding New York City in a major way. but they struggled very hard. Some Irish people came here and decided they preferred to stay because they'd had bitter experience at home. And others were very fond of Ireland and eventually returned. So it was very complicated. The growth of New York City really coincides with the arrival of large numbers of Irish immigrants beginning in the 1840s with the onset of the Great Famine and then continuing into the late 19th and early 20th century. At that time, the Lower East Side really was the most densely populated place in the entire planet. A tenement like 97 Orchard Tree, we're talking about 100 people living in about 22 apartments, a single faucet of water that's outside. It's not a forgiving city. They dug the subway tunnels, they dug the sewers, they, they built the bridges. They did all the manual labor that was there and eventually went into the skilled trades. It forced uh, Irish Americans and Irish to organize. So when you look at the beginnings of organized union labor, it's really where it started. And it was really the Irish immigrants that had such a tremendous amount to do with what we see today. I was being interviewed for a job in the Upper East Side in a very extravagant apartment. And the lady of the house said to me, oh, you're Irish. She said, I love the Irish. They're such good servants, you know. And that took me down a little bit because I, I was trying to get a job of building a large building. I do not look at architecture as a position of privilege. I look at it as a very serious commitment to serve. And you take the ego out of it and you commit yourself to doing some good. I arrived here with the green card and absolutely no intention whatsoever of staying. I came as a graduate student to IIT where Ms. Van der Rohe was teaching. And then I ran out of money and beginning of 1949, the United Nations had been founded and they were beginning to build a building in New York. I got in a bus with my last few dollars and got to New York and begged them to give me a job, which the man fortunately was kind enough to give me as a file clerk. I have the greatest sympathy in the world for office workers. If you could make a situation where they could feel that they are part of a live community, because we should all love each other. Well, the Ford Foundation is a manifestation really of what I've been saying. We created this line of offices around a central space, and it was my hope the community would use that central space. People would come in and sit down and look at the little goldfish in the pond or whatever, 
look at the blossoms on the trees. And then the people who worked in the building were also mixed with them. We tried to make it as rich an experience as possible. It's a very unusual city because it is massive. It's people with all sorts of races and ethnic groups, with old groups that have clung to their traditions, like the Irish, New Yorkers, and with new groups coming from foreign countries who bring in their own new traditions. I think it's part of the Irish spirit that if there's a chance to be taken, we'll jump in there, we'll take it and, and see how we do. And probably why so many Irish people do well over here is that you're given the chance. The song goes, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. And I think it is true. Gilbane Building Company was founded when the first William Gilbane came over from Ireland. There's a kinship, even if you weren't the one that came to the States, you almost feel uh, that you have a sense of what it was for your ancestors to come over here. Right now we're in Lower Manhattan in the Financial District on the 49th floor of One Wall Street. It's 50 stories. It was built in 1929, largely by Irish immigrants. Uh, laborers and carpenters and stonemasons and it was built in eight months which is a tribute to that workforce because that's near impossible it could never be built in eight months today just the physical constraints of building in new york city buildings are tall the sites are cramped it's a very tough environment to build I had just started the job here and I had a bag on my back and I was walking into the office and they handed me a ticket for a meal. What are you doing? You know, why would you hand me a ticket? And then I realized because there's a lot of people who come here for a meal who look just like me. A lot of people live paycheck to paycheck. It does not take much to spiral out of that. It's a very expensive city to live in and the reality for a lot of people is that they need help from places like us to be able to, to stay here. Providing a house is one thing, but providing a future is the real key to having a life. My advice to young and future architects is make a commitment. Dedicate your life to trying to improve the environment and the way of life of everybody else, as many as you possibly can do. You know, the modern architecture has been one of the worst periods in the history of architecture. The next generation of the generation beyond that will begin to realize what went wrong. You do not need an ego when you're an architect. You are there to serve. How may I serve you? <laughs>